Hello everyone, my name is Inko and we are back in Europa Universalis number 4. We are playing as Muscovy as we all know. Tver is requesting military access. We will accept because... Currently, uh, Tver is at war with Lithuania, Poland, Moldavia, and Moravia. Oh my goodness. Kilwa has a, pe a peasant's war, we don't give a shit. Okay, um, so I've got this crazy scheme to give Tver their cores so that they will accept our vassalization. We cannot uh, sell them provinces or offer them vassalization if they're at war. So I think what we'll do is we'll just let Tver get their ass kicked and maybe we can enforce a peace. Well, we have to enforce a peace on Lithuania. And they don't, they don't want anything to do with that. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, we have to deal with our own cores. It's going to cost, I'm going to say, 400 administrative points, essentially, to core all the uh, the provinces provinces that we gained from the uh, the annexation of Skov and Yaroslavl. Um, and I think we will... We'll just save up and core these one at a time. We are still looking to pump some points into our religious ideas to unlock Sudebnik, which will make coring much cheaper. I don't know, maybe Tver will get annexed by Lithuania, which would suck, but I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world. It would just give us... It would just give uh, Lithuania a pocket in our empire, which I think would benefit us much more than it would benefit Lithuania. We could always just annihilate whatever army is there very easily. We are suffering attrition in... in Novgorod, so we might want to split this army. Uh, shit, that is not what I meant to do. Let us cancel that. I want to select my artillery, and we will put it in Neva. Why the hell not? Actually, we, we would probably be able to fit our entire army in Neva. Is it Geographical. I always think it's an economical for some reason. Okay, so let's put our troops in Neva because they will be able to sustain themselves there. Oh my god, Poland and Lithuania are just kicking the ever-loving fuck out of Tver. Uh, I think we have some some claims currently on Kazan and Lithuania as well. I don't know. It does it doesn't really matter. I don't think we're going to be going to war anytime soon. We really want to core some of our provinces, try to get ahead on tech. Um, we did just unlock uh, workshops. There's not really anywhere that screams out for me to build in, though. We've got Moskva, Vladimir, Novgorod, and Vyatka. Okay, we'll start with Vladimir, just because as far as the numbers go, it is the most viable. And they are building iron as well. Producing iron, I should say. So that is quite valuable, that resource. Okay, we have a political crisis. Political crises occur from time to time. Man. We can lose one stability or lose 25 legitimacy. We will lose legitimacy because <laughs> it will uh, replenish quite easily. It doesn't really affect too many things either. Just power projection and prestige. It's not a huge deal. Now we've got three diplomats standing idle, so perhaps they do not want to be independent, I, I guess. Uh, we could... can't really do anything to Sweden, actually. I was trying to sweet-talk Sweden because they are in a personal union with Denmark. Denmark is one of our rivals, so I figured, I don't know if we try to appease Sweden. Maybe somehow that will imp improve relations with Denmark, but obviously it doesn't work that way. Let's improve relations with Denmark directly. Maybe we can stave off, you know, an attack if they're really desperate. Uh, I don't think that will actually help at all, but we'll pretend. Much like uh, we will pretend that these lands actually belong to us as we fabricate all these claims on Kazan. Okay, we will start with Litepsk. Lipetsk, my mistake. Tambov. Yeah, let's get this little vestigial... This little... Okay. Nope. Tver has accepted peace. And they're going to pay some war reparations. That's not a big deal. So maybe... Okay, we'll start with Lipetsk. Sure. Let's talk to Tver. They probably will not want to buy a province. Uh, now that... 
they have to pay wall reparation, so maybe we can sell it dirt cheap. Oh, they will only accept if the cost is zero. I think it's Rutsev, that's their only core. Tver... Kaluga, perhaps? No, that's Lithuania. I think, yeah, it's just Rutsev, that's their only core. You know, we'll try it. We'll try to sell Rutsev. Now... They absolutely will not accept for anything less, rather, le anything more than zero ducats, so maybe we'll wait a little while. They have just had a war after all. <laughs> I think their economy is a little bit shattered. Um, all the bakeries have been burned down. Not because the Lithuanians charged in and threw torches, no. It's be just because uh, Tavarian bakers are notoriously uh, lax as far as uh, health and safety goes. Oh shit, Galich as well. Oh, it's because it has salt. Okay, well, we will build... Okay, so the Boyar's uh, influence has reduced. We'll build a uh, workshop in Galich as well as Vietka. Uh, is this custom... Costoma? What the hell is this called? Costroma! We can build a production uh, workshop in Costroma as well. If nothing else immediately sticks out. I think Muskva is an obvious choice. And then there's, there's, there's not really anything in Perm at all. Uh, okay, we have increased their loyalty, wonderful. Let's take a look at our estates because we've had some stuff expire. So we have to increase the Boyars... Uh, is that influence? Um, no, their influence is okay, I think we could increase their loyalty. Well, we could increase their influence as well, but it's not really a big deal. Um... Yeah, you know what, I'm not going to say there's much that we need to do. Uh, we could always demand some some points, though. That wouldn't be too bad. Do we want docks? I don't think so. I think it would be alright if we increased our production before we unlocked docks. Okay, United in Prayer. Ivan III, Veliki Rurokovic, being a man of faith, has found an unusually personal way of creating a trust and ensuring loyalty. When meeting another orthodox ruler in person, he will often ask them to pray together for their common goals. While perhaps forsaking some of the distance sometimes needed in diplomacy, it can create stronger bonds than any formal agreement. Okay, I don't need to read this out. You can read it at your own leisure. What we can do is increase Wallachia's opinion of Muscovy. Uh, I don't really... I'm not sure if that's gonna make a difference at all, so perhaps... We'll take the 15 diplomatic power. It does, I don't know. That was kind of a a non-event. Not very... Nothing really changed because of that event. Oh shit, you know what we could have been doing this entire time? Managing our overextension. We will start with Yaroslavl and then we will go Ostrov, Skov, etc, etc. Alternatively, I could just save up for Skov and do it outright the first time. Okay, Tver, how is your economy? It's still shitty. I'm gonna say, until this recovers, you can pretty much say that uh, their economy has not recovered from that war. So we, I thought, uh, did we just get discovered forging a claim? I'm pretty sure we did. Okay, let's start developing a little bit here. Where do we want to increase our production? We want to increase production in the Novgorod node, I'm gonna say because we have a huge amount of trade power there, we dominate the node. Um, we're doing pretty well in Kazan as well, now that I look at it. I guess really anywhere in our kingdom right now is fine. Are we an empire yet? No, we are still just a kingdom. Okay, Crimea has had a civil war. Which is interesting. Who are they allied with? Kazan only. I wonder if perhaps they'll get gobbled up by Lithuania. No, they have a truce. No, that truce is going to be over pretty soon. Perhaps we could, we'll we see Lithuania move towards uh, the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea again. By making some moves on Crimea, they're gonna, you know, slide up, sidle up. I think sidle would be the proper turn for a sneaky Lithuania. They would sidle up next to, you know, the obviously distraught Crimea. And they'd say, hey girl, what's up? I see you having some problems. 
Luckily, I'm a problem solver. Something like that. I don't know. We're going to pour a lot of diplomatic points into Vietka. We want to increase the goods produced by quite a lot. Um, copper is by far the most expensive product in our uh, kingdom right now. We've got one node here. There is a node just south of our border in Kazan. And there's also a gold node, which I would be very interested in acquiring. Eventually, when we, you know, inevitably go to war with Kazan. Uh, gold is always a great source of income. Although the, the um, inflation can really destroy you if you're not paying attention. So we do have uh, three, four nodes of salt as well. So that's not a bad resource to develop. Galich produces salt. Unfortunately, um, the other three nodes are in really like backwater ass end places of our em no one lives there the only people that live there are salt people i don't know if you know like what salt people are but they're just literally uh salt that has somehow gained sentience and it's not like it's a weird creature or anything i mean it's weird in the sense that it's constructed from like sodium chloride but it still lives a normal life it still eats and drinks which I, it's still pretty awkward when you think about it. A, a salt man drinking water, it's, it just runs out. It just runs out everywhere. Not only that, it creates a bit of a, a mess, you know, with the, the dissolving and the... Uh, anyway, we have some regional nobles challenging Muscovy. We can crush them, which will piss off the boyars. We can give them local autonomy, uh, which will increase autonomy in Olenets, which is one of our frozen territory, so that's not really a big deal. Okay, we will get autonomy in Olenets. whoop de fucking do No one cares, because Olenets is a shithole, essentially. Okay, let's put some points into Vladimir. We're producing two... two goods. 2.0. That's not too bad at all. Also, we can put a few points into Nichni Novgorod, which is a fine trade zone. Although... Ooh, oh, I see. We're getting a, a slight bonus from the burgers, so it would actually make more sense to spend points in Nichni Novgorod than, say, Galich or Vyatka. Although, now that I'm looking at, looking at Vyatka, it would make sense to pour a few more points in. Let's say... Three levels. That ought to do it. And then we can increase... Let's go with... Um, military power. There we go. As far as technology goes, um, I forgot my overextension yet again. We're trying to save up for Skov. We now have the points to do so. Okay, so it actually kind of worked out that time. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. I was not watching, you know, the, the point clock or the points. And, um, it just ended up, uh, I ended up getting reminded that, hey, I gotta spend some points, and uh, it, just, it just worked out. It was great. We are actually ahead of our military technology, so we, we, can, um, we can continue to accumulate points, but it doesn't hurt to throw down a few points on manpower right now. I think Yaroslavl is maybe not a great place to put it. Anywhere that's green, light green, etc. Perm... Or Troitsko Pachersk, which was, if I recall, the capital of Perm. There's a shit ton of men there. Um, let's see. Moskva has a shit ton. Vladimir. Let's look at our trade goods again. Moskva, Miram. Miram is a grain producing province. So is Kaluga. So is Yaroslavl. So maybe we'll put some points into Yaroslavl. Why? Oh, I see. Because it is owned by. The clergy, which increases our uh, our autonomy. Let's see. I mean, that's not ideal, to be honest. So let's not spend points in Yaroslavl right now. Let's try to put a few points into... Let's diversify <laughs> and put a few points into Miram here. And then we'll just hold on to the rest for now. Okay, the non-possessor movement. Have we not already had something like this? 
What are we doing right now with Patriarch Authority? Are we gaining? Are we losing? What's our current uh, trajectory? Okay, so it looks like we are gaining Patriarch Authority because we want missionary strength and manpower. There we go. Uh, see, it's not so bad to lose taxes because we're doing pretty well as far as production goes, as far as uh, trade goes. So, you know, it's, it's not too bad at all. Okay, so we have lost our power projection a little bit. And that has reduced our military leaders by one. So we actually have two military leaders. One too many. And that is pissing off all sorts of people. You can walk down the street and people will whisper, There's that guy that has too many generals in his retainer. He's got too many generals on the bill. <laughs> I don't know why people are so upset about it, but hey. To each their own. Okay, where do we want to... Where do we want to increase production? There's not really anything worthwhile right now. Perhaps we want to invest in trade. We definitely want a marketplace, I think, in Vyatka and Galich. Um, it would also make sense to put marketplace in Yaroslavl. And also, whatever the hell that is, border friction. Kazan's opinion will change, put a positive spin, revoke the claim. We will piss off Kazan. We don't care. Oh no, a great uh, advisor has died. <laughs> Shit. We can get spy offense or trade efficiency. We'll go with trade efficiency. Let's see, we're currently making 1080. Well, that didn't affect anything at all, it seems. I Was our... Um, Advisor beforehand, a trader. He must have been. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I can't say for certain. Let's fabricate another claim on Kazan here. We will go for Tambov. That's it. We also have... You know, we have a lot of ducats. What do we want to spend it on? Taxes? Taxation? Um, sure, we'll put a church here. And we will also build... A mark. Oh, I forgot we have barracks. Let us build a barracks in Suzdal. That would be ideal, I think. Yeah. We'll go with Suzdal. And now we have 300 ducats left over. Jesus, what else are we going to spend this shit on? Uh, we are just raking in the cash, actually. With our army maintenance at half. We're not doing too bad. So I'm kind of thinking that we want to... I was gonna say we we would want to gobble on Kazan a little bit. Unfortunately, they're backed by the Timurids, as well as Uzbek, if I remember. Yeah, Crimea, Uzbek, and Timurids. So they've got a really huge backing right now. So I think maybe we won't be uh, paying so much attention to the uh, to the hordes. I think it would be best to piss off the Lithuanians and and uh, perhaps fabricate claims. I don't know. Let's look at our ledger while we're at it. We'll find Lithuania. They have 17,000 manpower, 35,000 troops. That's not great, uh, to be honest. They have the same tech level as us, too. Is it military tech? No, they're one level behind. They do have diplomatic technology, though. How are the Livonians? Okay, we have to... Please, the Livonians. Ugh, it's not quite good enough. Oh, okay. <laughs> the clergy has appeased our people somehow. Um, have we sent a gift to... No. Okay, so if we send a gift to the Livo... Jesus Christ. <laughs> the clergy has just mobilized the populace. And then, in the next breath, they have lost some influence. I guess they spent all their political capital <laughs> mobilizing the populace. Whatever the fuck mobilizing the populace means outside of like a military context. I don't know. Okay, let us... Uh, I'll talk to the Livonians. We want to send them a gift. We don't have any diplomats though, so let's uh, revoke... Oh, there we go. We finally... Cord, Skov, I forgot about Ostrov again. Man, just really shitty with the cores. Okay, so now we can save up 
I think we want to save up for some religious ideas before we unlock the next idea group. Well, I don't know. I think we ought to unlock the next idea group so then I can have a choice between, you know, religious ideas and... What would be a good group for Russia? Perhaps offense? Defense? Let's see. What are, what are our ideas? So obviously we get huge bonuses to manpower, production efficiency, colonists, army tradition, and technology costs. So, oh, we also get a manpower modifier here and a reduction in infantry cost. And eventually a manpower modifier yet again. So would it be best to stack with that and unlock the quantity idea? Or would it be better to perhaps go for quality? Because, I mean, if we went for quantity... We already have a huge amount of quantity, so do we want to hone our large amounts of troops, or do we just want to flood the fucking market with men? I think... It may, honestly, it may almost be better just to go for quantity because then we will always have a huge advantage over whoever we're fighting. Uh, kind of like a historical... I, I mean, yeah, historically Russia was always known to have a huge land army, so that seems to be fitting. I uh, just, I don't think quality would have the same effect that quantity would have. If we stack the quantity ideas with our current ideas, then it's just like we're unstoppable as far as manpower goes, as far as land force limit goes. Um, so yeah, maybe we'll go for uh, for quantity. I don't know. If you guys have any thoughts on that, just let me know. Um, then again, we can always go for like exploration so that we can start pushing uh, eastward. Oh no! Ivan III, Veliki has fallen ill. More power to the nobles. Reduction in tax. Or... Do we want to appease the Boyar estate or the burghers? Let us see. Okay, we can definitely side with the, uh, the Boyars here. There we go. Wunderbar. Uh, back to the ideas, though. Oh shit, there. <laughs> oh my god. Um, what kind of ideas have good synergy with religion? Uh, religious, religiously sponsored guilds. Goods produce modifier. Eh, I don't know. Okay, so apparently we have <laughs> pleased the Livonians as much as we can. So now we have the duty to send them a gift of a hundred ducats. That will get our relations far and above our target, which was 150 so that we can get our Western arms trade. Eventually we will drop uh, a huge amount of points into military technology. For now, let us focus on prospering times. He has been renowned for our country's artistic achievements and blossoming economy. Okay, we can invest in urban <laughs> infrastructure, gain one base tax, rural infrastructure, I mean, uh, manpower or diplomatic power. I think we want administrative power and base tax. Sure. That will get us one step closer to unlocking these ideas. Although, some points towards our military technology would have gone a long way. Especially if we plan to attack Lithuania. Uh, any... Whoops. Not what I meant to do. Any... Um, Edge would be great. Their army is... Rather, their manpower is growing as the months pass. So they have half... Uh, just under half the manpower us. Well, I say just under, but they're short a few thousand. Let's go down to Poland. Poland has very little manpower, so... It would not be a bad idea, I think, to attack Poland-Lithuania. Uh... Combined, they have a larger army than myself. Who are our allies again? We are allied with the Livonians. And we have 
no vassals, I don't think. Because we have... We've annexed them all, so perhaps we should talk to Tver. Sell them a province, if they will have it. Please buy Ritzev. I would very much appreciate it if you bought Ritzev. And they will actually buy it for 13 ducats. Okay, we're going to sell it. And hopefully they will become an a vassal now. Let's see. Oh, offer vassalization. Oh no, they are too advanced it seems. At the very least we can offer unable to create alliance as we have an old treaty. Oh shit, we have Anel Treaties until 1497. Okay, well, I didn't need to sell Ritsev to Tver right now. So that's a bit of a mistake on my part. I should have paid a little bit more attention there, but what do you do? Okay, so, not much has changed, really. We've initiated the plan to vassalize Tver, but it will not come to fruition for another fucking, like, six years. Um, Lithuania is sort of in a fragile position. They are... Recovering from their from their wars Poland is looking pretty sickly right now. They're thin and anorexic and their people are probably starving if These borders are anything to judge um, Obviously, they were forced to release Mazovia um, Poland's manpower is abysmal. They've only got 7,000 men now 7,000 men of like probably 30,000 or something to that effect. I don't know Lithuania's manpower is not so hot either, I don't know. I'm not really sure where to expand next. I think Lithuania is a our only viable target as Uzbek, Crimea, and Timurids are back in Kazan. We could always perhaps, you know, go for Sweden. Uh, they are in a personal union with... Oh my god. <laughs> what? Denmark has a personal union with Norway and Sweden? So let's say if I was to declare war on Sweden, would I then be declaring war on... No, just Denmark. They will be considered a co-belligerent though, that is a problem. If they're a co-belligerent, they can call Norway into battle. How about... As far as manpower and army goes, what's Sweden like? Probably not great. 13,000. Okay, that's their land force limit. How about Denmark? I mean, they have a lot of shitty, frozen territory, so I can't really say. Yeah, Denmark's not looking so good, but combined, they're now at 30,000 men. Uh, Norway, let's look at Norway. I think Norway will be the make or break. <laughs> if Norway... I think Norway won't have, you know, much of an army. 7,000 men. So, collectively, they have 37,000 men. So that's a, that's a viable target. Maybe we should start fabricating claims on Sweden. I know I just chatted them up, but... Lithuania is looking to be pretty, pretty solid right now. Well, not nearly as solid as Kazan. <laughs> but uh, I think Sweden, Norway, and Denmark are a much softer target than Lithuania and Poland anyway. Okay, I'm going to end it here. So thank you everyone for watching. I hope you are enjoying this series. If you are, as always, leave a comment, leave a like. Uh, if you want to get updates on uploads or, you know, just get in touch, then you can check out my social media at the links below in the description. And uh, come back next Friday because that is when I upload the Muscovy campaign. And uh, I guess until then, my name is Inko and uh, I'll see you guys later.